an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching. To help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life. Through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts with my co-host, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, how are you today? I am awesome, Wendy. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited about today. I woke up and I'm like, you know what? Today we're talking about balance, having balance in your life, balance in the world. And of course, what kind of made this stick out in my mind is this weekend. I was watching television with my son and all of a sudden Karate Kid comes on. So can't go with, you know, when you think about Karate Kid, you think of Danielson, you think of Mr. Miyagi. And there is one specific quote. Do you know what the quote I'm talking about? Give it to uh, me, Ken. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's one of those life lessons that the uh, late, great uh, Pat Morita imparted upon uh, Daniel's son. Uh, and to read it here, a uh, lesson, is, it's hard not to do this in, in the in the Mr. Miyagi voice, but uh, <laughs> lesson is not just karate only. Lesson for whole life. Uh, whole life has a balance. Everything be better. So everything I, be better. Yeah, so, <laughs> everything be better. So you think Mr. Miyagi? I think sweep the leg. That's what I oh, think. Oh, really? Of, yeah. I yeah. think of, you know, everything from sweep the leg. I think of everything from, you know, when he's doing his, the stork, whatever you call it, yeah. the kick. And, yeah. you know, when he's kicking in the ocean and he's trying to, you know, I don't know. Like it, the whole yeah. movie itself, even though it was so many years ago, it's still so relevant, I think, to today with bullying and everything going on. But all in all, you have to have balance. And I think with the holiday season, there's no time better to talk about life balance than today. Today is our day. That's it. <laughs> Let's talk balance. Let's talk balance good, exercise good, everything good. Everything good. <laughs> I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a banner above my uh, computer screen. <laughs> everything uh, good. Everything be good. better. Yes. And you know what? I think, you know, when we when we think about balance, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about balance in relation to exercise. But before we even get to that portion of kind of what we're going to talk about on this podcast, I think it's also important to think about just family balance, life balance, self-care balance, which is super, super important. And during the holidays, we often just, you know, we're so busy and so caught up and what needs to be done and where we need to go and what presents we need to buy and who we need to contact that we kind of lose the true meaning of the holiday, you know, spirit, first of all. And second of all, we really start to lose ourselves. We overindulge in our food. We drink probably more than we should. We're sleeping less. We're working more to try to do the end of the year stuff. So I think, um, you know, when we talk about balance as a whole, it's really important to, to kind of put yourself aside, look at your calendar and actually space time out for yourself, for your mental well-being, as well as your physical well-being. Yeah. And I, and I like I like where you're going with this message, Wendy, of, of work life, you know, mental, emotional, social, spiritual uh, balancing. And I mean, if you take that same thought process to your workouts, right? You, you, you have, you know, a lot of people that work on strength and work on power and maybe they're working on their six pack or, or, or whatever it is. Right. Um, but when you look at what we're going to talk about today with with incorporating balance training into your workout plan, it's it is one way to have more yin to the yang. Because you have to slow down, you have to stand still, you have to you have to focus inward on how you know how your body is because you know and i've and i've watched you train athletes and clients and your focus on okay hip knee and toe alignment shoulders level hips level and you know pay attention to the position of your foot and you know with with the traditional workout with machines and dumbbells and moving with heavy weights throwing things uh, the ability to just hold yourself still, 
right? And go the other way with your workout. At least a component of your workout is something that goes missing. And, you know, part of it's, I mean, it's not the fault of the exerciser. It's, it's, it's relatively a newer concept within training, but it gives us an opportunity to kind of think about us and how we're holding ourselves and our position and, and where each one of our body parts are relative to the other one when it comes to movement. Yeah, I think it's important to, you know, to piggyback off of that, you got to think about your everyday activity of life. And we need balance. Um, you know, as you know, we're talking yeah. about walking, when you're talking about running, when you when you, you know, um, are stepping off a curve, you know, if you don't kind of get what you get what you train for. So if you never really train for balance, you're really not teaching your body a way to, you know, be able to handle situations that maybe were unexpected. And I know firsthand in a personal story, you know, my dad's aging. He um, became a caretaker for his wife and he stopped playing golf. And, you know, but him walking, you know, doing the golf course, he played every single day at his noon group. And what was unfortunate is when he stopped playing golf and he stopped doing all the walking and really stopped focusing on his self to better his game, which was, you know, physically really good for him and mentally very good for him his balance has shot way down. And now just even standing up from a chair is quite a challenge. And this happened within like just three months. I mean, it was so fast. And so when we talk about, you know, incorporating balance into your programming, just realize it carries over to everything that we do in our life. And if we just spend, you know, a couple, you know, a couple different sets doing just different types of reps and different types of exercises, it really can benefit us long-term, especially as we get older. Cause you know, you see the injury rates and what happens when you fall. Right. And um, you mentioned a couple of things there, walking, running, jogging, and, you know, it being late in the year, you know, New Year's is right around the corner. And so comes New Year's resolutions. And a lot of people will try to spend calories and, you know, burn some, burn some energy um, running outside, running on a treadmill and things like that, which requires you to be, upright and you know on two feet and a lot of people don't realize that when you walk just a normal walking pattern you spend about 85 percent of that normal walking pattern on one leg and then when you're running you have a hundred percent of that running pattern that gait cycle on one leg so it winds up being very very important to know and understand how to control and stabilize on a single leg and you know an example of your dad who if, he, if he's walking the course and my dad golfs as well and um when they're walking the course you got to remember too that they're they're carrying their bag or they got their push cart but you know if if there's any hitch in their giddy up as as i like to say um that's going to carry over to other compensation somewhere else in the body so knowing how that leg is going to react and control and stabilize when it's the only thing between you and the and the ground, uh, it winds up being a very important thing to consider to make sure that, okay, if that's not working well, then it's guaranteed that something else up the chain isn't going to work well either. Absolutely. And those of you guys that are just joining us, I'm Wendy Batts here with my co-host Ken Miller. And today we're talking about balance. And remember, if balance is good, then your exercise is good and everything is good. And that's what we're talking about. And to your, you know, to, to piggyback again off of my story and what you just said, Ken, I mean, when you're thinking about training and you're, you're in the gym doing simple, simple things like just a single leg bicep curl. Like if you're going to do biceps, just do it on one leg, you know, like something as simple as that something, um, Mm -hmm. because what we think is simple, if you will, if you have really good arch alignment and your second and third toe is, is really lined up well with the knee and you're, you know, you've got very good posture, you're squeezing your glutes, and then you're working your biceps, you are burning more calories, because you're working more muscles. And it's going to carry over to something again, that's going to help strengthen the arch, which is going to be better for your gait and better for, you know, your increase of speed, whether that's a, a faster walk or eventually a run. And, you know, it's, it, it's those little small accidental things that you can do and just incorporate without really changing up a lot of the things that you enjoy doing at the gym. And that was hard for my clients to understand. They're like, I'm like, okay, now we're going to do some balance work. And they're like, oh, I just got to stand on one foot. I'm like, no, no, no. we're still going to do your biceps. It's all about the gun show. However, I'm going to have you stand on one foot and they have to continuously tap down and, you know, like in the very beginning and they start to see like, 
oh, wow, the, the bottom of my foot is burning. I'm like, yeah, no kidding, because those muscles are super weak. And now we're trying to challenge them. And the more we challenge them, the better it's going to be for you long term, because I'm going to make sure you're standing on one foot correctly. Because anyone can stand on one foot. But if you look like a, you know, right. like a crazy bird that's like trying to fight off something and you're going everywhere, that's not good information in. Remember, our, our program is our brain. We want to make sure that what we're doing is very, very concise and very specific. So therefore, it's going to translate correctly. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's funny because when, you know, when I was a, when I was a strength coach, what, you know, the getting the players to do things on one leg, it was the hardest thing to do because, you know, it's like, hey, coach, I'm not as strong. You know, I can't curl 90 pounds when I'm on one leg. It's like, well, you know, that's that's because your nervous system, your nervous system isn't, you know, firing. You know, it's not strong enough to one balance you on one leg and give you the force and energy to control your spine and have you do something like a like an arm curl but i tell you what if you're gonna if you're gonna do your arm curl which i mean these guys already they're pretty built big arms big shoulders and all that good stuff but i and, and i i would tell them i go everything else in your body is going to get better over time including your curls you just have to give your nervous system a chance to coordinate between being on that one leg, getting the hips stronger and more stable, giving your spine and your core, right, a little bit more strength for you to upregulate the nervous system for you to get into those curls. So, yeah, hey, 90 pounds is plenty good for a football player, but if we can teach your body to control and stabilize even 80% of that on one leg, you're going to be stronger at that weight on one leg than you are at 90 pounds with two feet on the ground, which, you know, which eventually happens. Everything goes up once that nervous system is taught to fire, especially when you're dealing with challenging stability, like what we're talking about with, with being on one leg. But yeah, when, when you're dealing with the younger set, that's looking more towards cosmetic, uh, you know, their, their looks and their appearances. Yeah. You need, a, you need a certain level of strength and power, but strength and power increases when stability increases and you're going to challenge stability when you get balance to be a part of your workout where a lot of people don't do that now. So it's one of those kind of missing ingredients like, you know, KFC, like that, that mystery ingredient that's going to help you <laughs> get that like, thing. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got to like, throw, yeah. throw a KFC uh, reference in there at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, you know what? I live in I live in Atlanta, and so of course it's where the Coca Cola, you know, company is, and they have this huge, huge um, museum, if you will, where you can go and taste all the different cokes from all over, and you can make your own. and And they do wow. they have a they have a vault with the actual like kind of ingredients of what goes in Coke that nobody can see. So just wanted to throw that out there. I'm seeing how we're talking about sprinkling and some stuff, but you know what? You don't need a cookbook or a recipe with us. We're pretty much an open book. And that's one of the reasons why we do these shows is just to say that it's not anything that's, you know, some, we're not, we're not doing anything that's like, oh my gosh, it's earth shattering. We're just teaching you guys to think about programming that's going to make sense and that's something that is going to be important for you to have long term. And when we talk about balance, we're really talking about things that we're doing on a single leg, because, yes, you can be on standing on something on two legs that may be unstable. And yes, that still is balance work or doing something lying on a ball. And yes, that does require balance. But what we're talking about is when your foot is in contact with the ground and you're standing on one leg, ways that you can challenge yourself that way. Because again, that's what's really going to carry over in your gait, which is your walking pattern. So when we're defining balance, I just want to kind of stress this. We're talking about stressing an individual's like limit of stability. So what is their balance threshold throughout all, all of it? Because it's anything that's the distance outside of your body. And so anything that you can do that's going to challenge yourself, making sure you've got really good alignment. So just because you can do it doesn't mean you own it. You've got to do it very well. Um, but as you said, stability is going to be, you know, really, really important. So start on just single leg movements, doing other stuff with your body parts. And then we can systematically progress it to make it harder, which is what we can talk about next. How do we yeah. make it harder? Yeah. Enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> well, I think, you know, the, the other thing, you know, with, with all that is that, you know, 
we are dealing with and working with our center of gravity and our base of support. So when you talk about that balance threshold, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty important concept because what happens is this, is that if, if we, if we have an inability to control and stabilize our body in an upright position, what's, what's the next thing your brain is going to want to do to help you move around right safely and efficiency so basically the brain just doesn't want you to fall over so what does it do it kind of shrinks you and it kind of and it compacts you a little bit so what it'll do is it'll help bring your center of gravity lower to the ground making it less risky for you to um, fall over and lose stability so that's where balance starts to kind of go away so you you mentioned your 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 father who, who is aging and, you know, and you notice within a few months his challenge to stand up even uh, was, was greatly accelerated. So what happened there was like the, the nervous system is kind of downregulating, trying to keep you safe. And that's where the balance threshold can be smaller or lower to the ground than others to where, again, what we really trying to do is to get you to control your center of gravity over your base of support and, and, you know, it's that concept that we need to understand that, you know, standing tall and upright is going to be based on your ability to stabilize and control. And, and again, this that's where the balance work comes into play. Yes. And those of you guys that are just joining us, we're talking about balance, good, exercise, good, everything's good. And I'm Wendy Batts with my co-host, Ken. And we were just talking about the importance of balancing and just just standing on one leg, doing certain certain movements. But, you know, if you give yourself about four to six weeks and you know that you've got really good arch alignment, you know that everything that you're doing is, is pretty ideal in your motions that you're doing with the execution of your exercises, then you're going to have to start challenging and progressing that. And so you're looking at more dynamic balance, which is like a way for you to really try to move under different you know, conditions. You're moving in different directions because we don't just stand in one place. We don't walk just straight mm -hmm. forward and back. We have to stand to the side and we rotate, we move. And so we want to, we want to train for, you know, your speed of life, your ability to be able to handle different situations under different environmental, you know, situations, I guess you can say. And so once you, you know that you can kind of stand on one leg, which I do when I'm brushing my teeth, just so you guys know, um, not that you care. Okay. However, that's what I do. I, I balance when I'm brushing my teeth. Um, so for two minutes, one, one leg um, each minute. Um, but, uh, but if you're in the gym, what you can start to do as a progression would be something like a single leg squat. So instead of now just having your leg in contact with, you know, one leg or one foot in contact with the ground and working on that alignment, now you're going to start adding movement to that stance leg. So you're going to start bending the knee and really challenging your prime movers of the quad and your glutes. And so that's a, you know, mainly trying to get the glutes to fire because we all need it. Everyone's glutes are getting saggy and weak these days because we're sitting on our tushes way too much. And so mm -hmm. single leg squats, single leg Romanian deadlifts, um, you know, anything like lunge to balance, anything that you can do where you have a balance component after movement and then you can really stabilize that at, you know when you go back to your balance hold is extremely important and very very beneficial and it also progresses your workout to give you something different and challenges your muscles in a completely different way right and you know i think you know when it comes to the sequence of events right so question is not so much okay why is this important and why you know why should i do it it's about when to put it into the workout so for a lot of people out there it's going to be about okay after you've done your self myofascial technique you've done a little bit of core work you've like wendy said you 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 know our our glutes are going are going to sleep and we need to upregulate it we need to wake them up so you once you do your your movement prep work and early in the workout within the first 15 or 20 minutes that's where you're going to do a lot of these great exercises that you're talking about, Wendy. So it doesn't have to be, you know, anything too crazy. It doesn't have to be a 10 or 15 minute segment of your workout because we know that we're all time precious. But if you're getting, you know, one set of 10 to 12 to start just to kind of get things going and then you can work your way up from there. But those movements Again, it's, it's so critical. A lot of people don't realize how important form and technique is because you can have a great exercise, but if, a, if this great exercise is done incorrectly or done with a lot of compensations, as we talked about in our other podcasts where, 
if your foot arch is collapsing, your knee is collapsing, your hip is dropping, you're leaning forward, and, but your intention is to improve coordination and stability, you do something incorrectly, all of that other stuff goes out the window. So for a lot of people to start this component of their workout, work on form, technique, and those, those things that we talked about with, you know, watching your foot position, hip knee and toe alignment, hips level, shoulders level, and taking that simple movement, like you mentioned, Wendy, brushing your teeth. And it's funny you, you mentioned that because I have my kids doing that as well. Uh, when they're, <laughs> I go, stand on your right leg for one minute. So I have the little, little sand, that oh. sand or whatever. So when that, that's a minute and then they turn it over. So one minute on one leg, once the sand is done with uh, one side, right? Hmm. Flip it over and then they bounce on the other side and there's their other minute. But well, there you go. You know, yeah, I and need then, that. You know, <laughs> yeah, it just well, you know, you have this thing called a um, a smartphone. Which well, is, I know, but I, we do that. I do that. <laughs> so I use my phone, but it's like Mickey Mouse that's going the countdown. So, brush, <laughs> you know, brush up and down, brush side to side. So, I mean, it teaches him how to brush his teeth, but it doesn't necessarily yeah. say switch legs. So, man, yeah, maybe I there need both. So, I think, yeah, I think we're stumbling upon something here. I know, maybe, yeah. maybe the, this is the next best thing. Twenty twenty two. Watch out, yeah. there may be some sand whiten, thing. Yeah, with... <laughs> yeah. White, whiten your teeth and uh, turn on the glutes at the same time. <laughs> and guys, the thing is, is when we talk about progression, you know, we were talking about movement. Then we can start adding a little bit more, you know, um, I guess more dynamic movement. So, like even like a hop to a hold because. You know, we need to learn how to how to hop. If you're running, you, it's important that you know how to hop, which when you talk about a jump and a hop, people sometimes confuse the two. Yeah. When I'm talking about a hop. You're doing like one leg. A jump would be on two. And so can you hop forward? You know, and it doesn't have to be like some major distance, but can you hop forward and hold that for three to five seconds, keeping yeah. good alignment and that you, quote, own it, which is something I've always said. I don't know why I say that, but I do. And then can you hop to the side? Can you hop to the other side? Can you switch legs and hop from one leg to another? Like all of these different things really do matter. And to your point, Ken, this is just one component of something very quickly that you can add in your circuit that's going to be super, super beneficial, especially during the movement prep that you, you talked about. And um, I think, you know, on a programming side, that's really important because if you look at the statistics about injury rates with people falling when they're older, I mean, it can actually lead to death. If they break a hip, it can actually lead to death, which is super scary. But even in the younger individual in our youth, I mean, you've got to think it mm -hmm. can help with ACL injuries or preventative. Um, it can help with ankle sprains being preventative. It can also help if you've had it to help strengthen it so you don't end up, you know, re having these same injuries reoccurring over and over again, you're actually right. strengthening the muscles to avoid those particular things. So, so many different benefits. And one of those things that, you know, like I said, when we talk about balance, I'm super passionate about, and, you know, I throw it into my clients programs. They have never questioned me. So as a trainer to say, this is what we're going to do show, tell, do, and they're not going to challenge you if they trust you and they believe in you, then you are going to be able to benefit them and say, Hey, we're training you for life. This is part of life. This is what I'm going to have you do. And they, and it's, you're going to help them. There is so many different benefits, so many different benefits. Yeah. And, and one of the things, I mean, you, you can't talk about balance without it's, it, without its effect on injury prevention or addressing uh, what, what we call what performance inhibitors, those things that take away from you getting better. Um, something that I know you and I both tell you know, our students and clients that we train is that one of the biggest predictors of injury is previous injury. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, as, as frequent as ankle sprains happen, it's never just the ankle that's affected. So what happens is that the, the, the ankle is sprained, there's injured to the, the, to the site of injury. But what also happens is that the hip starts to downregulate because it's your brain saying, Hey, I don't want, Want you to use that ankle so the gateway to the ankle is through the hip so i'm going to kind of down regulate everything but once the ankle heals it doesn't mean that the hip turns back on again and gets back to its normal function the the hip is now in a weakened state so by incorporating balance work not only do you have an opportunity to get the foot and ankle to kind of reintegrate and be a part of the bigger picture, but you also give the hip again, when it's done properly, you give the hip a chance to kind of work again with the ankle and work again with the rest of the body. So 
when we when we talk about ACL, ankle sprains, and and different different injuries that can happen with the lower extremity, just know that without intervention, these things are going to happen again. So when I work with somebody who's in junior high, high school, if they tell me they've got a a, a history of having foot and ankle, maybe a knee injury, that's where I'm just super super aggressive about making sure that their balance work is dialed in, especially if they're playing something like basketball and mm -hmm. you're talking about moving in multiple directions, owning it um, when it comes to stability training, because a lot of, a lot of the kids, you know, they'll, they'll, these kids these days, right. They'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll lose attention because they'll do that hop and hold, like, like you mentioned, Wendy, but then they'll kind of fall out of it. Right. They don't own it. They're not in command. They're not, putting the other foot down because they want to they're putting the other foot down because they're trying not to fall over they okay i give you that two seconds but then that's all i got and then they oh yeah you know, then they fall out of it so really they didn't own it and owning it is the biggest part of it all because that's what means that your nervous system is controlling it from beginning to end one of my favorite things, and I guess even before I say that, those of you guys that are just joining us, uh, Ken Miller and myself are talking about balance and how, you know, when you've got good balance, you actually have good, just you're balancing everything in life. But we're talking specifically in your programming. So, you know, balance is good. Your exercise is good and everything is good. But one, one fun thing that I do, especially when I get to train the younger guys, because I, you know, I'm starting to see a little bit more and more of um, people that are getting ready to get into college and they're trying to, you know, maximize their chances of getting a full scholarship or something. And there's nothing that drives them more crazy than some old lady, which is myself. OK, so when I'm saying old, I'm talking about myself <laughs> that can do an exercise and I, I own it. And then they do it and they can't do it. And then I'm like, right. hey, what's up, you know, young buck? Let's 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 you know, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is why it's important. If I can do this, this should be super simple for you. And I think it, then it becomes a challenge. It makes it fun. So there are different ways to have fun with your yep. clients, integrating some of this, you know, some of these important concepts into programming. And, you know, I just like I said, make balance fun. Don't make it like some, oh, yeah. now we're going to stand on one foot, like big deal. This is a big deal. And you, you know, you yeah. make it important. It's important. Just like you have to make foam rolling important. You have to make certain stretches important. And as you mentioned, do some core work, then add some balance work, then add some things to speed, you know, speed up your movement and then just go into the body parts. It doesn't have to be rocket science, but it's all incorporated to really help maximize end result when they're doing their actual body parts where they're going to move better, feel better and perform better. Yeah. It's not rocket surgery. I like to say, um, <laughs> so, All right. the, 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 so, and, and you know, what's, what's really important here is, is to put yourself in a position of success, right? Find your wins. So if you're a personal trainer that's listening to this podcast, migrate it, migrate your clients responsibly, right? Put them in a position of success build their confidence so that if you're doing the progressions like what what you said wendy there is you know first stand still on one leg and then move the hip and the knee and then we can do our hop and holds right so go through the progressions go through multiple planes of motion but progress them responsibly don't you know it, it's not one of those things where hey your client looks good they're they're eight percent body fat yeah this is somebody that's obviously got good control of their body but let them earn it, earn that next level. So once they, you've given them a challenge, they've met that challenge with, with uh, absolute 100% execution, you're building confidence and then move them up to the next, because they'll, then they'll be jazzed up and excited about, okay, well, what's next? You know, you know, you know give it to me. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and tackle this, right? But if you're, if you're somebody who's an exercise enthusiast who's listening to this, find your own points of success have those key checkpoints in line, good foot position, hip, knee, and toe. And again, I could, I could say this all day, right? Hips level, shoulders level, good control of your spine and your, and your hip complex, and then progress responsibly. So good balance, good control, slow, moderate movements, and then hop and land and own the landing, and then just kind of vary it up from there. But the key is progress responsibly right don't go too far too fast because then nothing is nothing is nothing is going well that's right and i think that's pretty much our key takeaway you know progress yeah. responsibly i think incorporate it first of all 
Because you, if you, you know, if you're not even adding it in there, there's no nothing to really progress. So, you know, when when you think about everything, and and hopefully, I think my key takeaway is find balance in your life altogether, but also make sure you're finding balance in your program. You need to balance not only your muscle groups, you want to balance your exercise selection, but you want to incorporate things on single legs because that balance will transfer into things that you do every single day. That is extremely important. If you can't understand, extremely important, especially as you age, because when you see somebody that can go from being super active to barely being able to stand up without assistance in less than three months, it's very, very heartbreaking knowing that, that there were changes that could have been made and different things that could have been integrated in order to keep that from happening. And so it's really hard to go back. And so just starting adding it, no matter what age you are, add it today because it will make a huge difference long term. Yep. And, you know, my the last point I want to say is that if, if you work on stability, like we're talking about with balance, if you, if you can control yourself still, you can control yourself moving and loaded and then you can control yourself better when you have to move with speed so strength is built upon stability but power is also built on strength so everything hinges on your ability to stabilize and control yourself especially on one leg so i think uh, i mean that's that's a lot to chew on i think when it comes to <laughs> the importance of balance but hopefully we've imparted upon you the listener or the viewer depending on which platform you're watching us or listening to us on um, but if you're not doing it now, it starts as easy as brushing your teeth and then do a bicep curl, something easy that you're standing, do it on one leg, and then you can incorporate it formally into your sequence of movement preparation. So with that, Wendy, I think, uh, I think we've given a lot of people, a lot of things to, uh, well, something to think about when they're looking at balancing their life and making everything better. So, um, yes. great topic. And I love it. And um, I'm going to definitely have uh, my clients listen to this one. Those that especially are like, come yeah. on, really? <laughs> on one leg? Really? So you, it's important. <laughs> it's important. Uh, <laughs> all right. Important for us, uh, you know, enough for us to talk about it. So, all right. Until next time, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely feed up on this one. But, hey, this, this is one of those topics that, uh, you know, came as a question um, for us to talk about. So, Keep it coming. Anything you guys want us to, to address and do some research on and, and share with you what we know about it, please let us know. But uh, until the next time, everybody, you guys take care, be safe, and be well.